Well, happy Sunday fun day, everybody. It is August 28th, I think, 2022. And if this is bonus day number 94 for yours truly here. Um, Hannah and I are on a mission trip. It's kind of great. My little got a chai tea this morning at another Starbucks. Um, so I'll be, we'll be stopping at lots of Starbucks on our missionary trip that's now turned into a medical seeking trip. In April of 2021, I went on one of those back to Indiana. What a nightmare that was. So this time it's to collect the records that they refuse to provide me. So I'm going to march my tail end in there with my service dog and the man, my records. Seriously, I've had enough. So yesterday... I was, um, we were sitting at a Barnes and Noble that has a Starbucks inside. Cheers, everyone. To your morning cup of joe or whatever you choose to drink. And I started not feeling like to the point that I felt like when this journey started bonus day one, when I went down in the storage facility in Marathon, Florida. We were sitting there and all of a sudden I felt like I was gonna throw up again. I was like, this is not good. So the nausea just kept going. My whole body felt like it was shaking all over inside. I felt like I was plugged into an outlet and the chest pain was mild, wasn't bad. Um, so we, we headed over to church and uh, nobody was there and I sat in the parking lot and I thought, you know what? I think I need to go to the hospital. So this gentleman that pointed me in the direction of the, um, the church that I was trying to find, he sent me to, uh, I, I went back and he sent me to Halifax. Well, that's where I was supposed to go. Or no, 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 he didn't. I kept driving and uh, I pulled into an area that they were looking for parking and he, they, they told me where it was at, which I passed it. I didn't realize I passed it. Um, so, all of a sudden the chest pain got worse to the point that it was it was really bad. So as God would have it, there was a fire truck with the lights on blocking an intersection because I was at um, the speedway in uh, Jacksonville. That speedway area or whatever they call it. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a racetrack person, whatever. So I literally saw the lights, did a U-turn, didn't care if it was legal or not. Um, and drove straight there, got out and said, went up to the, to the fire truck and no one was in there. And there was a whole group of Baptist Christians picketing, spreading their lamp oil. And they saw me and I'm holding onto my chest. And I said, I need some help, you guys. I said, we need to find these paramedics now. And they so and then, and I said, and can somebody move my car? So one of the girls got her husband to move my car over to the Wawa. So it was taken care of, brought me the keys back, locked it up and all that. Well, um, there's somebody coming, so I have to keep her on a short leash. <laughs> she likes to explore. So um, so they finally found some paramedics and they said, we're, we're coming right now, what's going on? I said, I'm having serious chest pain, this is bad. It's never been this bad. Um, even the time that my blood pressure skyrocketed over 200 and the lower number was almost 200, my heart didn't hurt. It just, the stress was causing it to skyrocket. So they start taking my vitals and they're, they're just shaking their head. They're like, but you're having chest pain. I said, severe chest pain. And it's like wrapping around. It's back here. It's behind my back. It's so, uh, so these Christians. 60 of them, thank you, Jesus, um, held onto my hand, took, took care of Hannah while the paramedics did their job and called me an ambulance because they, they knew I needed to go in. They clearly could see, despite my vitals, just, but my pulse was dropping extremely low and that concerned them severely. Well, my, my pulse is always low, but it doesn't matter how I got there. <laughs> I just look at them like, well, okay, whatever, whatever, however it's going to take me to get to the, to the ER, then so be it. I don't care. It's their call. They're the professionals, right? So, um, 
what a godsend those Baptist Christians were that worked at the Speedway, that oh, wherever the motor, whatever the area is called. Um, you were lifesavers. Love you all bunches and bunches. Thank you for holding my hand for everything. So, so the, uh, and Hannah got to have her first ride in the ambulance and she couldn't stand it. She wanted to be up on my lap because she knew what was going on and she knew what her job was. So I finally get into the, the, um, emergency room and they get me into a room and they say, what's your address? And I said, well, I don't have an address. I'm homeless. I've been homeless since February. And they just, it was like the jaw drop moment. Like, say what? And they're looking at me like, how can you be homeless? Exactly. How could anybody be homeless? No one on this earth should be homeless. Seriously. If you know somebody that's homeless and you're not helping them, well, he knows that you're not helping them. So what's your excuse? Because that's what everybody wants to do is give excuses. Just like why they don't want to give me the time of day because it's my fault that I did what I did to myself. Yeah, it's my fault that I trusted a man that made a promise to my father on his deathbed. I've got our girl. And he has not fulfilled that promise under God. It didn't matter if it was written. It was written the day he spoke it and he heard it. So that's why I'm in the situation that I'm in. I have trusted another individual whom I love and I still love him. But he's got some demons trapped inside of him. He needs some serious deliverance and repentance. So he's the reason why I'm homeless. Just so everybody's crystal clear on this. Not anything I've done. What are your allergies? What are you allergic to? And I looked at him. I said, pharmaceuticals. Well, like which ones? I said, like all of them. I said, my primary physician in Indiana said, you just cannot take pharmaceuticals. Every single one of them you have a side effect for. He said, I support you going holistic. And that's the, that's the, that's the road you need to travel. You just need to keep me up to date. So I can't wait to go visit him in this medical seeking journey. Huh? Dr. Um, Dr. Peachin in Goshen. So anyway, well, what, what do these artificial sweeteners do to you? I said, anything artificial does not belong in Natalie's body or nor anyone else's for that matter. Just so we're crystal clear. Um, so they run tests, they take blood work. Of course, I have chest pain the whole time. And they come in and say, we're going to give you a something cocktail. I was like, oh, brother. Yeah, it's such and such. It's a, like a Metamucil with, I think, lidocaine or something. I was like, oh, brother. This is like Novocaine. So they mix it all up, give me a little bendy straw, take a sip of it. I took one sip and I said, yeah, I'm not drinking this. My body said no. He said, what? I said, I'm not drinking that. It's poison. I said, I don't need something to numb my esophagus when my heart hurts. And you're not doing anything to help that. I'm sorry that they're all ignorant and they can't understand the signs of congestive heart failure. My, my girl, Princess Hannah, did. Because you know what she did? She wanted up in my lap. So I said, can we put the gate, the, the, the hospital bed rail down? Because she wants to get up here. And as soon as she got up on top of me, she laid her entire body on my heart. Like, I'm not kidding you. And then she's looking, I'm like, do you see what I'm doing? That's what you should be doing to her. So she laid there enough that it helped take the pain down. <sighs> she's amazing. It's in her, it's, it's heaven sent. So she stayed up in bed and they're like, well, she needs to get down from there. I said, she's not getting down from here. I said, because she's taking care of me. She's my service dog. She doesn't have a tactical collar on for nothing. I mean, ever since I got this Jeep, I feel like Sarah Connor. So giddy up, let's go. That's right. So finally, I, um, get released at 11 p.m. And I was there at least at six o'clock. And I got a nice sleep, so did she, and air conditioning. So that was fantastic. And uh, she was helping my heart, they weren't. So I said, okay, you're gonna release me and how am I supposed to get back to my car? I said, I'm homeless, I have no money. And I don't even know where it's at. It's at a Wawa over by the, the uh, race track nonsense. 
Maybe it was University Drive. I don't even know what it was called. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, there's a bus. We can give you a bus pass, but, well, they're not running until tomorrow. I said, well, how's that helping me then? So then another doctor comes in, and he goes, well, there's Uber. And I said, well, that's a great idea, too, but how am I going to pay for Uber? I don't have any money. Remember, I'm homeless. I don't have an address. He goes, well, I have an Uber account. I said, okay. He said, he said, I'll be happy to call you an Uber. I said, what? This is a doctor. He said, I do it all the time. I said, what? And then I started to get choked up. I said, thank you. So he called and ordered an Uber and he got me a, he got me the black car, the big one. It was nice too. <laughs> um, since I have her, I mean, we got royalty here. She is not just a princess. She's a queen. I mean, I clean up her poop. Let's just be honest. So, um, then he hands me a 20. He said, here, for dog food. Like it was nothing. Well, $20 to me gives me a half a tank of gas. And I got dog food for her, so I didn't need dog food. But thanks, Lord. You just gave me $20 more to put in the tank. <laughs> Truly. So, um, that cocktail that they gave me didn't help. It started numbing my mouth. There's nothing wrong with my mouth, nor my esophagus. I mean, it's clear as a bell. My oxygen level is just fine. Well, it's not your heart. There's nothing wrong with your heart. Well, bullshit. Sorry, excuse my French, but I know what's wrong with my heart. It's congestive heart failure. I'm not stupid. Nor is she. And I don't have to be a doctor to know what's going on. With me. I didn't have to go to medical school to know my own body, which is nonsense. So, um, I, uh, that one sip, I'm telling you right now, I still, I just still cannot even believe it. So anyway, Halifax, thank you for the free blood work and the chest x-ray. Cause that's just more fuel on this medical seeking trip because I've been, I've been talking about needing new blood work cause I haven't had blood work since last year in February when I went to the, to the nightmare of a visit to the lower, lower keys hospital that can't wait to go visit that train wreck of a hospital and he's put out of business. And then the Baptist hospital, I'll pick those up on my way back to the keys cause that's my home. I may not have a physical address there yet, but I'm about to, starting tomorrow. Um, it's, it's a place where all my mail can go to. So, uh, so um, let's see here. Oh, and he also gave me, the doctor also gave me a one of the phone charger outlets because I was my phone went dead when I was in the hospital, in the ER bed. And uh, I said, well, here, do you want it back? And he said, no, no, you can keep it. I got plenty of them. I was like, wow, okay, great. So he was a good doctor. He was a, truly a good doctor. But I want to I explain to you why I had to take a trip to the ER. And what was the big factor in me having to go there? Was the darkness from the people thinking that I have some kind of mental issues. Okay, that needs to be... You need to knock it off. I have full faculties. My proofreading skills are still not up to par, but they're getting better every day. I don't need you to diagnose me. When I know clear as a bell, my brain is as sharp as a tack, despite the little hiccups with my proofreading skills. So my advice to you is, and throw away that freaking key. I said, because anybody that's gonna attack me, that's gonna make me end up going to the freaking ER with chest pains, put me into congestive heart failure, well, I'm gonna be throwing fireballs right back at you because I've had enough and I'm over it. It's time you, Take care of those demons that are within you and stop stealing others' joy, including my own. I live in a world of peace under God, and I certainly do not need any more people's nonsense in my life. So I'm sorry if people don't agree with my methods of my care, but it's my body, my life, and it's under him. So maybe you want to continue to get poisoned at whatever facility you are. But they released me with this, the same chest pain that I had when I when I was got there. I was like, I'm not worrying about it. It's edema. She'll get rid of it for me. 
She knows what to do, and she tells me. And as soon as she laid on top of me, she kissed me all over, like, Mama, I got you. That's the kind of care I need. Because guess who's leading her? It's certainly not a tyrant regime. It's God. It's God, it's God, it's God. And everybody can say what they want, but I'm going to tell you right now. He wants me here to teach. And if you don't want to listen, then walk away. But if I hear you talking about me, I'm coming after you. And I will approach you. So you can delete me as a friend on Facebook or whatever. But trust me, I'm coming to a state near you because we are traveling the U.S. What better time to do it when you're homeless? We got the Jeep. We've slept in it twice now. It was a little hot last night, but a little better. Realized I uh, took pill two pillowcases off. And if I put my legs, one leg in each pillowcase, which gave me a whole other idea for an invention, my legs weren't sticky. The, the pillowcases were keeping my legs from being sticky. And eventually, I actually covered up with a blanket. I couldn't believe that. So um, the handicapped bathrooms are awesome. I go in there for spit bath. It's got the baby changing table in there, too. So I've got a place to, to put my stuff. I, I can't I can't lose. Can't wait to take a shower, though. That's going to be a, a, a joy. But but I'm clean as whistle. So I repacked the car today. So I repacked the car today so Hannah could be in the back seat. And she is just thrilled to death. I'm like, you know what? The front seat is just not feasible. But I've got a whole realm of ideas to spruce up the Jeep. I want to take the front seat out and make a platform for her so she can go between the front seat and the back seat and all kinds of other stuff. I want my seat taken out and I want it to be able to, when I'm not driving, to swivel around. Just saying. And I know they have seats all over the world. And I've got a friend that I'm going to contact that sells seats and see if they aren't willing to try a prototype on my Jeep. Let me be the guinea pig. You donate and we'll, let's see if we can do this. So, you know, the worst they'll say is no, and I'll just check with someone else, right? That's the way I look at it. It doesn't hurt to ask. I mean, what if they say yes? The worst place you can be is not asking a question. That you, That's like you're dying to know the answer, but you're too scared to, to ask it. Well, I'm not afraid. I mean, heck, I went to a, I walked over to a car wash yesterday and told some gentleman working there, Russell, I think his name is Russell, Russell and Dave or Daniel or something. There were two gentlemen. And I told Russell my story and I said, you know, go to my YouTube channel and you'll see what I'm telling you is true. I said, but I said, we are out of money. I've got $10 in change and it was a lot of change. I took my, I thought it was a mermaid fund, but apparently it's a uniform. It's going to be both as far as I can, I'm concerned. So I, um, he gave me eight dollars. That's all he had. So the eight with my ten got me all the way to, um, was it Daytona? I think it was in Daytona. Yeah, Daytona, where Halifax is. So I, I mean, just saying. Plus, the twenty dollars then got me. It's gotten me a lot further. So um, we have a Venmo account. Um, La Casa Tesoro de Celio, and it's a picture of me with my father, Tim Johnson. God rest his soul. And uh, so if anybody is um, willing to contribute to our missionary slash medical seeking trip, we would be ever so grateful. Um, we're also um, seeking Starbucks gift, gift cards because my phone has been suspended. So we're stopping at Starbucks along the way to take a break get a cup of joe or like this morning i've got chai tea latte that's chai, chai tea um and and then i get a reload of hot water before i go because they give me two tea bags that's win-win so for three dollars i got two ventes chai tea win-win now that's affordable so i i started this journey with my first caramel macchiato which has always been my favorite in uh in the Florida Keys for the bargain price of nine dollars and some odd cents. I'll never forget that. Still need to contact that owner about it. So um, you got to be smart, and you got to be willing to ask for help. And some people just want to sit back and be evil Wilsons in the background, watching, so they can whisper behind your back. Well, fireballs. Just remember, we'll be coming back in your direction. 
if I hear of you talking about me or anyone else, you're, you, you better be expecting a fireball. So my advice to you is be holy, be obedient, and start repenting because everything out of your mouth he hears. And, and he wants me here to teach. It's simple as a day. Because when they looked at me, EKG, they, they all they all looked at me, they go, well, your EKG is perfect. There's nothing wrong with your heart. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I knew that on October, April 15th, 2019, when I had two ER doctors at the end of my bed telling me, are you done yet? What do you mean? If you continue on this level of stress in your life, you will die with a healthy heart. Yeah, I heard that. I will never forget that. So I understand, and so does she. When I have chest pain, it's edema. It's not my heart. My heart is in perfect operating condition. Not only that, all my blood work came back with flying colors. It's amazing when you go holistic and you don't put poison in your body. You take the poison out with holistic remedies from Dr. Lonnie Herman, who's in Davie, Florida. Give him a call up and tell him Nat 333 sent. Nat 333 and Princess Hannah Grace sent you. And if you need a good dentist, Dr. Gorbachev in Hollywood, Florida will hook you up. So, um, bonus day 94. Whoop, whoop. I said, I, we are on this mission and we're going to have a blast. And uh, we don't know where we're going to be led. I, Tennessee, I need to be there by, by um, um, next week for a deliverance conference. Um, I will not miss that. So, um, we're just out spreading our lamp oil everywhere we can go to, to shed some light in this world, God forsaken world full of darkness that continues on. So love to all bunches and bunches. Thanks for the prayers and anybody, like I said, anybody that's willing to, to help with our, our crusade, our mission, our, we're, we're, we'll be forever grateful. If you um, want some visitors along the way and do you want to open up your home to me and my girl and she gets along with all dogs and she gets along with everybody and she loves kids. She loves kids. She gives hugs and all that. Um, please reach out and let us know because we would love to come and meet with you if we don't know you and um, see how you live your life. So anyway, again, love to all bunches of bunches. Bye.